Um, welcome to From the Inside Out, the importance of indoor play and catification. I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget it, obviously. Um, we are so excited y'all are here with us today. When it comes to cats, enriching their lives absolutely varies for each cat. Some cats are up for the outdoor adventures that other rooms are talking about, but some prefer to be indoor only, and that's okay too. So we wanted to chat today about how we make the indoors exciting. Um, your hosts are me at Twin Doherty's, Lynn at Desi and Rue, Kate at House Panther, and Sam at Mr. Boeing Hot is in the chat, paying attention to um, any comments or questions in there. I am also linking all of our social media into the chat. So if anybody has any questions or anything, just shoot us a message on our Instagrams or anything like that. Um, so a little bit of background on me and then we'll all just introduce ourselves a little bit. I am the mom of six cats. I try to make their indoor space enriching and fun. All six of mine are former ferals. So we still have a little bit of spice and feel safer most of the time indoors. Two of them will go outside a little bit, but it's just to the backyard. So we really try to make an enriching and fun environment here um, indoors. And so, yeah, we are also based in New Hampshire. Um, so Lynn, do you want to just do a little introduction? Sure. I'm Dr. Lynn Barr. I'm in Marietta, Georgia. It's an absolutely gorgeous day today. Um, I hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Um, I spent 30 years as a veterinarian, primarily in feline medicine. And back in the day, the majority of my patients were outside. Um, people even actually threw their cats out at night and shut the door. Um, and then through the past 30 years, I've seen this transition from outdoor to now exclusively indoor. And the majority of cats are, are within the four walls, um, which really changed a lot of the diseases and, and health problems that cats had. They just swapped one for another. Um, but it, it really led me to start working with my patients as their environment, their home, and um, their whole family and looking at that uh, rather than the actual disease condition that they had come in for. Um, all of that led me down the road to provide even more enrichment because I was having a really hard time finding things that helped cats stay active and engaged and entertained indoors. And so I started my own company of cat toys called Desi and Rue. And I went from veterinarian to toy maker. So that's my story in a nutshell. I love that. Hey, do you want to do an intro? Yes, thank you for having me today. I'm <clears throat> always excited to talk about cats and enrichment. Um, so I own a House Panther, <laughs> which um, you can find me on social and on housepanther.com. Basically, my deal is I combine cats and design. So I'm not a veterinarian, I'm not a cat behaviorist but I work with those people and I have a design background. So I have an undergraduate degree in design and environmental analysis, but that was a long time ago before catification was a thing. Um, and then I did graduate work in visual communication design and product development. Um, and then sort of after all of that, I started getting cats as an adult. I always loved them, but in my thirties, I started having my own cats and uh, this guy over here. <laughs> demonstrating something. Um, so I started writing a blog in 2007. So really early days about cats and design. So meaning well-designed environments, products, anything that makes a cat's life better, that is also aesthetically pleasing. Um, and then uh, eventually Jackson Galaxy tracked me down and said, hey, I, I need your help because I don't know how to make things look good, uh, but I know what needs to happen. And so we wrote the two catification books together. And if you've seen any episodes of um, My Cat from Hell, you might have seen me little bits here and there where he would bring me in to work on particularly design challenging projects. Um, so I basically um, write about cats and design. I design my own line of cat furniture and cat toys. And I also design environments, both residential and for shelter design as well. Now I'm really focusing a lot on um, how the environment in an indoor space can bring the, you know, make cats live their very best lives, both at home and in shelters. That's awesome. 
we're going to need to talk to you about some more cat trees um, after this. <laughs> um, Toffee and Brulee have shown up too because a churu came out. Um, and then just so everybody knows, in the chat, we have Sam, um, whose cat's name is Bowen. Their Instagram is Mr. Bowen Cat on Instagram. They've had Bowen since he was found abandoned in a box at three weeks old. And ever since that, they've gone on adventures across the United States together. And he's the first cat they've ever adventured with. And now he's six. So Sam is in the chat as well, just like being attentive to anybody's questions and stuff. So we can answer questions towards the end of everything. And so a couple of topics we wanted to talk about are the importance of play. Maybe we'll start with the importance of play. So Lynn and Kate, I'm just going to kind of leave the floor open if either of you want to discuss that. Well, Hi, okay. We both do a lot with toys and play. And the Desi and Rue toys are some of my absolute favorites. They are all <laughs> absolutely spectacular. Um, and then I have uh, some of my toys, which I do believe we're giving, we're doing a big giveaway at the end, uh, which will be for a bunch of these. Um, I know, uh, and Lynn, you can jump in. I know that both of us tend to approach this whole play and toy um, from the same perspective that Jackson was mentioning before earlier, uh, is that you're looking at different types of prey and triggering different instincts and getting cats to really be active both physically and mentally. So like when I design toys, I'm always kind of looking for things, you know, things they're going to bunny kick, things that are like, like prey, like I have a spider and it's kind of like a little mouse shaped things. So my take is always kind of playing with different materials and different things that simulate different types of prey, but kind of with a modern aesthetic. Um, and then, and just really watching the cats and seeing what they react to and uh, making sure that they have all sorts of different stimulus. Lynn? <laughs> yeah, so um, it is play, but I think of it even more than that in that cats are within four walls. So think about it, they are living within four walls. They're really captive animals. They need exercise, they need enrichment, they need so much. Um, there's a lot of myths about cats and that is that you know they're low maintenance pets. Well, an indoor only cat is a really high, high maintenance pet. Um, I wake up every day and I think to myself, how can I make today a little different for my cat? Um, and so that gets my wheels spinning, whether it is, and, and play is essential, you know, they need exercise, but you can also have them follow you around the house by just dropping treats, getting them to walk. You can take wand toys and get them to climb high for it. Um, indoor enrichment to me involves fresh air. You should open windows, um, bring grass in plenty of sunshine, you know, let them lay in the sun. Most people keep their blinds closed and their curtains closed because they don't want people seeing in. Cats need that. Um, I play routinely with my cats, um, mostly with wand toys so that I engage them. But I also do things like hide and seek. I hide scented toys around the house for them. I want them to use their minds as well as their bodies. Um, the myth that cats sleep 20 hours a day is just that. It's a myth. Um, if your cat is sleeping 20 hours a day, your cat is bored. Your cat is not as enriched as it should be. Your cat should not be sleeping that much. Um, and I recently wrote a book during the pandemic, Indoor Cat, How to Enrich Their Lives and Expand Their World. And Kate contributed a lot to the book. Um, because it was the first time that people got to feel what it's like to be in those four walls and have the day be the same day after day after day. And so um, the play is super important, but so is just bringing the outdoors in any which way that you can. I completely agree with that. And because all of my cats were found in literal bushes I try to bring that in but now so I know that they're like safe and secure with that so I'll bring in like branches if they smell kind of interesting or buckets of snow because it snows all the time here in New Hampshire now um or just like things like that I also in my garden make sure that I grow only cat safe flowers so I can bring in flowers and put them on my table but I also don't have to worry about them being toxic or anything like that so I love that um along with that 
we wanted to discuss different types of play and strategies for engaging cats that are harder to get moving. I know for me, each of my cats kind of plays in a different way and finds different things enjoyable. Um, like Brule, who's over there, she's very, very smart. So with her, I have to kind of think, okay, what's a challenge for her? How do I make this really exciting? So like we do some clicker training with her or sit, those kind of things that like you might think you could only teach a dog, but she loves to learn. This one is pretty content half the time. So we just have to stimulate her. And then the other four, it just depends on each cat. So what do you all think about trying to engage different types of like cats and especially the ones that are harder to get to play? Um, I'll start there with something that a lot of owners don't realize is that cats and the toys that they play with changes through their life mm -hmm. cycle. You know, kittens will play with just about anything. You really don't have to get them toys. But as they grow up and mature, they want different types of toys to play with. Um, same as, as us. You know, we don't want to play that, that two-year-old game that we got when we're in our 20s. Um, I feel like most of the pet product companies, um, except for Kate's and mine and a handful of others, um, really design toys for people to buy, not for cats to play with. And so oftentimes I don't blame the owner. They buy something that their cat doesn't play with. And then they go, my cat doesn't play. And they quit buying them toys. Um, so I see that as a really big problem. Um, they need to have the right toys. And then teaching people how to play with their cat is actually something that is necessary. Um, I always see uh, people grab a wand toy and dangle it in front of their cat. And, you know, Prey would never do that. Prey would run away. And I think Jackson talked about that. So again, learning a little bit about how your cat plays. You're so right. They're all very different. Um, my cat Desi was born in the house. He's never stepped foot outside and he doesn't really know how to jump and leap, but he likes little bugs that move around because that's really the only thing that he was used to. So you have to know your cat, different toys and watch how you're playing. You have to be the prey. And um, again, playing can, can involve set enrichment. It can involve, you know, bringing things from the outside. It, it doesn't necessarily have to just be that hunt. Exploration is a big way that cats exercise. Climbing is another way um, and just uh, keeping them active. Yep, and I love the puzzle box toys, um, but I don't necessarily uh, put treats or food in there because they don't free feed, but I stuff them full of all the little toys. And cats have that natural instinct to put their paws into little spaces, little crevices, like they would if they were outside digging under a rock or in under a tree or something for that tiny snack, that tiny piece of prey. So anytime that you can simulate that with a puzzle toy or by hiding things around, like Lynn said, it really does activate that sense of exploration. We've got some exploration going on over here. Everybody just kind of woke up. Um, I didn't say I live uh, with my husband and 12 cats in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, these toys are all one by one being thrown on the floor. So uh, <laughs> they're, they're in that mode right now. <laughs> I love it. I forgot I had left a churu in here and I was like, why is she having so much fun in here? Oh, because she's opening the packet with her little foot. <laughs> like that's her puzzle right now. Huh? <laughs> um, another topic is catification ideas for all budgets. Also for everyone who's in here, don't forget to stay tuned because after this, and I think the main room, we are all building a do-it-yourself cat toy. So go grab your empty toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls for that because that is a free toy. But for catification of all budgets, um, do you all have any recommendations? I know that in our house, we have some very expensive cat toys that are barely ever used. And then the bird seat out the window seems to be a very frequently visited enrichment tool by the cats in the window. Or when the big box shows up from the pet store of toys, it's the box that's the winner sometimes. <laughs> so what do you all do for different levels of like pricing and budgets when it comes to enrichment? 
Well, Kate is the queen of catification. She has two books on it, so she gets this question. <laughs> And I, I do get asked that question a lot because um, like you can see here, this is my office and we have some pretty extensive catification in our house. So climbing surfaces, hideaways, beds, toys, soft surfaces, scratchers, all sorts of things because it's kind of like a working laboratory. Um, but you don't have to get overwhelmed but, and you don't have to go out and spend a fortune. Um, the first thing I tell people is to look at what you already have and to think about how you might move things around or clear off a shelf. Like if your cat is looking up at a shelf that they really wanna go up onto, kind of Jackson was talking about that earlier, they, you know, they're gonna look around and they're gonna tell you where they wanna go. Well, clear that shelf off, add a non-slip surface, something like a yoga mat or a, a scrap of carpet, um, and you can use double-sided tape to hold it down and then maybe move a chair or a cat tree you already have um, and give them easy access up and easy access down. So whenever you're you're talking about environmental enrichment and really the built environment, you the number one priority is to make sure that it's safe um, and then that the cats have easy access, that it gives them sort of the pieces that they need. But you can you can basically like if you have a, a shelf above your kitchen cabinets that your cats would enjoy using and you're okay with that, then give them a way to get up there. And the same thing goes with toys and enrichment, like the puzzle boxes. Those are easy to make out of standard plastic containers, cardboard boxes, things you might have lying around. Um, and then I always add sort of that aesthetic thing on top of it. Like maybe you don't want trash lying around on your floor. So, you know, you can choose to make things that are, you know, in your color palette or, or, you know, look good or those that's where some of the more designer toys come in. Um, you just, you don't want anything to prevent you from doing it. So either budget or I don't like how it looks, or I don't think my cat's going to play with it. You have to just do something. You don't have to catify your whole house all at once. Just start in a small area, experiment and see how your cats react. Mm -hmm. So a couple of um, really inexpensive things that I think you can add in is take something like a blanket and throw it over your cocktail table and make a tent. Um, people always give their cats boxes, but usually the boxes are on the floor. Take a box and put it up on a table and that changes things. Um, also with the shelves in every room that I have bookshelves, we have a couple shelves that are empty. There are the cat shelves um to allow them to do that and then really the you know part of the catification to me is opening up the windows let them get fresh air that is such a huge cat enrichment um, and in my house we open up the front windows one day the next day it's the back windows the next day it's the side windows and so you just want to vary things up you want every single day to be just something new something a little different um, that makes it worthwhile for them to you know get up and play absolutely and even like with that where it's just a little bit different every day you don't have to constantly go buy new toys or go get new things you can take things away for a little bit or just move them like if I flip over a box for brulee to now play with her toy on top of a box, oh my gosh, it's like we're at the carnival. It's the coolest thing that's ever happened. Um, so just kind of being aware and just changing it up, even if you're just building a new fort one day so they can play in their fort for this day. They just, mine at least, seem to love that kind of stuff. All right, our other topic is how litter box placement can affect behavior and is important. So uh, take <laughs> Nobody's gonna like what I have to say, but uh -oh. litter boxes should be out in the open where you are and spend most of your time. Yeah. Um, you know, hiding it away is where you really do get most of the smell and most of the problems, at least medical problems. Um, if it's like, you know, it's always in my office and my house and at the warehouse. And the minute a cat goes to the bathroom and I'm there, I scoop it because I smell it. And so it really helps to have it out in the open. Um, you keep it a lot cleaner. 
and uh, you can observe your cat health-wise a whole lot better. And so for me, that's really important. Um, the other thing that I do is um, my cats all have different kinds of litter boxes as far as size and, you know, high walls. And I keep trying to figure out which one they like best. And, and I haven't figured that out. They actually use them all, um, which is a good thing. And so I have different types of boxes. I also like to do the locations a little bit different. You know, sometimes like some of them are away from the wall and then some of them are up against the wall. I think like people, cats are like, you know, they like different things and some want to be a little more hidden. Others want to be out in the open. Um, so I think you have to give your cat we we choose everything for our pets. You know, indoors, we say where they eat, what they eat, what bowl they eat out of, when they eat. Same with the litter box, what litter box, what litter. Um, and so giving cats choices, giving indoor cats a choice to me is, is the key to everything. And the same goes with litter boxes. Lynn, when you say you have different styles of litter boxes, do you also use different types of litter or is it all pretty much the same litter? I use the same litter. Um, and number one, it's convenience for me and ordering. But number two, um, I don't have any litter box problems and I never have. So my cats have always been really good. If if there was any indication that they weren't, then I would consider trying different litters. But um, I think consistency in litter is important. Um, but then again, if you have multiple cats, you have six, 12 cats, you know, I don't have experience with that many cats. I probably would do different litters to see what cat likes what. Again, it's choices. Very cool. Yeah, and I definitely second that with, you know, you need to have a lot of choices. And if one of them, if you want to try to have a covered litter box in a certain area, I, I am, I always get in this argument with Jackson, uh, uh, that it is possible, but you definitely not need to monitor your cat and give them other choices too that are not necessarily covered. Um, so there are ways to do it that allow for airflow, don't allow for the cat to be trapped. Um, the piece that I always bring to catification is um, the human aspect as well, because you do have to clean the litter box. You have to live with it, things like that. So I encourage people to make sure it's in an area, like you're saying, where you will scoop it regularly, right? And then you have everything that you need right there with you. So actually over here, I'm in the office, most of our litter boxes are on the catio, but I have a closet over here that has just litter scooping supplies. So bags, the scoop, clean litter, a bin to put it in. So that if somebody does use one of these litter boxes while I'm working in my office, I can just scoop it right away. Um, and so really think about your litter box perspective from what will help you keep it as clean and tidy as it needs to be for your cat, because you're, you're essentially part of this process too. So great. Thank you both so much. That was so helpful and so insightful, especially with my six even though Brulee has now decided to take a nap during this. Um, all right, we have time for probably a couple of quick questions and then we will announce our winners and then head over to the do-it-yourself cat toy area. So do we have any questions in the chat um, that are, is Sam typing? Oh, Sam said she's posting them in the chat. Um, what about the thought on the one litter per cat situation? I saw that in the chat one box. box I know per cat. Yeah. Well, I think to a certain number that it's absolutely a good rule. One box per cat plus one extra, because the concept is that there will be enough that's always clean and everybody feels like they have enough territory. When you get into the realm of 12 cats where we are, not exactly practical. Um, <laughs> so we have kind of the entire catio is all litter boxes. So that's a little bit of breaking the rules. So when I was riding indoor cat, I did some research on that. And um, there's really no scientific basis, in fact, for that statement. Um, there's, there's no hard, fast rule that uh, there's a certain amount of litter boxes you should have. 
I, you know, always look at the cat that goes outdoors and say the world is their litter box. I mean, they could go wherever they want. Um, and here again, we've confined them to four walls. We really need to make it as much of the, you know, as natural as we can. And that would be to provide your cat with as many litter boxes as, as you are able to. Um, you know, and think about us. If, if you live in a one bedroom, one bath apartment with your significant other, whomever, you know, that one bathroom's probably okay. But as your family grows, you need more bathrooms and people like to have the privacy of their own bathroom and our cats are no different. So the more, the better, there's no hard, fast rules to an exact number, but if you really want to make your cat happy and you want to avoid litter box problems, um, keep it clean, keep it clean, clean. No cat wants to step in another cat or their own urine or feces. And um, as many as you can possibly do. Right now I have two cats at the house. I have three litter boxes. I have two cats at the warehouse here and we have two litter boxes. They each have their own you know, litter box in a room that's supposedly their room. On bringing the whole cat litter indoors from the outdoors too, because all of mine have transitioned from feral outdoor life. I actually had to bring in dirt from outside and mix it into their litter for them to be like, oh, that's what I'm doing in here. So that just right. was a reminder of that. Um, our next question, we probably have time for like one more. How do you attempt to get two cats to play together, especially if like one is a little more aggressive? How do you work on that? Either. So I like, so my cats play differently. One is always kind of watching the other and I do play with them differently. Um, but every now and then I have to kind of separate them. I take one into a certain room and um, we play together. And the two cats I have here at the warehouse, it's the same thing. I really have to, you know, kind of distract one with like a catnip or silver vine toy. And then the other one, I've got the wand toy running around. Um, cats do not hunt in groups. They are solitary hunters. So they really do kind of prefer, um, to play, you know, when you're playing with them to play solo. And then Kate, a question you'll probably have a good answer for is renter friendly tips for catification in the house. Mm. Yeah. So in a lot of cases, when you're renting, you can't necessarily install things on the wall like this. Um, but there are a lot of really interesting new designs, things you can purchase, things you can DIY uh, for climbing, either things that sort of sit on the floor and can just be attached to the wall. Um, there are a lot of interesting suction cup related things, which could also be really useful um, if you are if you are traveling with your cat doing the van life thing. Um, could they attach to windows really well? Um, and then just freestanding furniture. Um, so it's really not always about building the superhighway by attaching things to the wall. You can, like I said before, just rearrange freestanding furniture to give your cat ways to climb up and down easily. Um, and then in uh, if you're in a small space, one of the things I usually am looking for is multifunctional furniture. So something that has hiding and climbing and scratching all sort of, you know, in one. So those are those are really helpful. And then how many cat trees per cat is a quick question. Is there a rule of thumb on that? There's really no rule. Uh, same thing with the litter boxes, right? There's no hard and fast rule. But what you're looking for in any environment, depending, especially a multi-cat environment, um, is that you're reducing stress, right? You're, you're giving cats choices, which helps reduce their stress. So if there is, you know, you want to have, if there's like one tree or one location that's really like the prime spot and they're fighting over it, you need to create some more prime spots. And if that's with a tree or a shelf or a window perch or something. So, um, you know, with 12 cats, we probably have 150 prime spots, you know, so, um, and, and, and really we, we, we have very little conflict in terms of, of fighting over things like that, but that's what you're looking for is your population and how are they all coexisting in a way that nobody's getting stressed out and give them just add one more, or he just knocked that whole thing on the ground. <laughs> Oh, I love it. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming. Yeah.